So welcome to tonight's program by Peter Post on photographing wildlife. So Peter Post has a doctorate in anthropology from Columbia University with a specialty in biological anthropology. He has published papers on birds in major ornithological journals, taught a field ornithological course at Columbia, and compiled and authored part of the 1971 Wildlife Management Plan for the Gateway National Wildlife Refuge, Jamaica Bay. Peter started with a brownie box camera about 70 years ago, specialized in macro photography, butterflies, other insects, as well as amphibians, reptiles, and other wildlife for about 35 years, but shifted primarily to photographing birds when he went digital. And as some of you know, his photographs have been published in a number of magazines, including Audubon and Natural History, and books such as the Handbook of Birds of the World and Peterson's Field Guide to Moths. So join me. We are delighted, pleased, and honored to have Peter Post with us tonight. Welcome, Peter. Hey, thank you, Anne. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, this particular presentation is photographing wildlife. So what is wildlife? And if most people think of wildlife as being birds and mammals. Uh, if you look up the definition, uh, it includes many other things. It includes all kinds of invertebrates, uh, such as butterflies, bees, wasps, whatever. And some people even include plants, but uh, I'm not including plants here. It does uh, include birds like this barred owl, which was taken in Central Park a few years ago. This rose-breasted grosbeak, also taken in Central. Uh, and this pine grosbeak uh, taken in Connecticut a few years back. And it also includes mammals, like this beautiful red fox that was photographed my, from my car window at Fire Island. Actually, um, I'm sorry, it was at Robert Moses, yeah, which is also on Fire Island. Uh, and uh, here's, I tried to include as many pictures taken in Westchester and the Lower Hudson Valley since this form is the Sawmill River Audubon. And here's a picture of an Eastern coyote taken on Croton on the landfill. And it also includes things like uh, other mammals like this white-footed mouse taken in Central Park and uh, frogs and amphibians uh, such as this New Jersey chorus frog taken in New Jersey pine barrens. Uh, or this Fowler's Toad, also taken in New Jersey. And here we have a Northern Copperhead, one of my favorite photographs. This is a scan from a slide taken years ago. Uh, you can see the nice fangs, saliva dripping, and it's swallowing a white-footed mouse. Uh, this, this was a captive, and uh, it was taken in uh, one of the local sanctuaries where the, these animals, these snakes uh, occur naturally. And once in a while, the local director and naturalist would catch one and keep it for a while as an educational exhibit and then release it. And so I was lucky there one day when he was feeding it with some of these white-footed mice that were wild caught. Um, this is the only one of the pictures that was taken captive. All the others are in the wild. Uh, it also includes wildlife, uh, insects like this uh, Halloween pennant taken at Pound Ridge, and this uh, beautiful red spotted purple butterfly taken in Sterling Forest. Uh, this particular insect is on the ground, what is known as puddling. It's uh, collecting minerals, uh, which is important in many of these butterflies for reproductive purposes. Uh, this is another beautiful butterfly, uh, northern pearly wing. Uh, I think it's just as beautiful as the more colorful ones. Look at those subtle, subtle shades of uh, brown and cream and gold. And then we have these very tiny skippers, which I think are also just as beautiful, uh, maybe the size of your thumbnail. Uh, this is a sachem, a southern species that uh, comes up in the fall into our area. This particular image was taken last year in uh, Ossining. This is another skipper, a tawny edge, also taken in Ossining. 
on milkweed. I believe that's swamp milkweed, not sure. And we have some beautiful moths as well as butterflies like this uh, spiny earthworm moth. It's taken in New Jersey. And this luna moth taken at Pound Ridge oh, about maybe 15 years ago. And also includes spiders wildlife. We have here a crab spider on a cone flower. This particular photograph was taken uh, in the garden at uh, Rockefeller, right near the administration building. Kind of like this composition and the colors. And here's another spider uh, getting a prey, wrapping a prey up in its web. And it also includes things like these, uh, this Portuguese man of war that was taken from a whale watching ship off of Montauk. And uh, some beautiful bees, uh, the pollinators, what E.O. Wilson called uh, the little things that uh, rule the world. And uh, this was also taken in Ossining, uh, actually earlier this year. And look at the mandibles on this thing. This is, I haven't ID this yet. Uh, it's another bee. Uh, this is uh, one of the leaf cutter bees. This is taken in Central Park. Um, and a beautiful thing and inside a balloon flower. And this is, all these spots are pollen. This bee is feeding on the pollen and it's spreading it all over. It's, uh, there's another bee, another uh, one of the leaf cutter bees. This one also taken in Ossining. Look at that beautiful brown colors and the green eyes. Uh, this is actually a wasp, although it's called an ant. It's a velvet ant. It's a female and the females are wingless and they sting like a lot of wasps do. The males, however, are incapable of stinging and they are winged. It's very difficult to identify, uh, to uh, photograph one of these. They're constantly moving, but this one somehow slowed down. This was taken at Pound Ridge on the hood of my car. Uh, this is a plant hopper. Um, let me see if I, the, this program has some difficulty dealing with verticals, but here, uh, let me see. There, you get a better sense of what that's like. This was taken, I say, in Central Park, and I think it's a beautiful photo, nice lighting. Okay, let me see. All right, uh, here's a, it also includes beetles, uh, wildlife. This gorgeous thing is a leaf, uh, dogbane beetle. Very common, called, of course, a dogbane beetle because it's found on dogbane. This was taken also at Rockefeller right by Swan Lake. Also, here we have some other beetles, uh, dung beetles taken in New Jersey, taking some dung back to its nest. And this was taken in Croton. Um, this is a, another beetle, one of the longhorn beetles, a locust borer, another beautiful thing, although they do cause some damage to locust trees. And uh, wildlife is found everywhere. <clears throat> I got home one day from my local supermarket and opened my ear of corn. And this is what I found, this corn earworm moth caterpillar. And so what did I do? I didn't get all upset and run back to the supermarket and want my money back. What does a photographer do? You take out your camera and of course you photograph it. And so here it is taken in my living room. It also includes things uh, that I won't have much to say about, but here we got uh, two at one blow. And what people's motivation it is, including my own. So I have a couple of pictures that I refer to that bring back uh, many memories. Uh, this is a, of course, a jaguar that I photographed when I was with uh, three other birder friends down by the river one day when uh, one of the workers at the lodge was taking his uh, outboard to the mainland to drop off garbage. And he asked me, would you like to ride back? And I said, sure, I got in the boat and we were riding along and all of a sudden he's yelling out, Anse, Anse, which is Portuguese for 
jaguar. And here was this beautiful jaguar on the riverbank. And uh, this was long before uh, people started going to see them in the Pantanal, which is a big tourist attraction now. And they told me that they only see jaguars there about twice a year and usually just swimming along the river. Uh, this thing was on the riverbank. And so he edged the boat up to the riverbank, put the bow of the boat on the riverbank. And I was using my 10 powers and the head of the jaguar completely filled the frame of my binoculars. Uh, this was taken with a uh, just a 100 millimeter lens. Anyway, he put the boat, the bow of the boat up on the shore. The jaguar got up and started walking toward us. You never saw somebody back paddle so fast in your life. And luckily it stayed there all afternoon. So I was able to get my other uh, friends down uh, to look at it. Uh, I was camping, uh, this was uh, back in the uh, oh, 1980s, I guess. Yeah, it was 1984. I was camping over 8,000 feet in the Western Himalayas in Nepal. And uh, during the night, there was a, uh, a hailstorm and it, consolidated into ice. And I got up in the morning and about six inches from my tent, I found this leopard track. So this leopard had passed by my tent in the middle of the night without me even knowing it. And another reason people, uh, main motivation these days, I think for most birders for taking pictures is for ID purposes. Uh, I took this picture when I was living in the Atacama Desert. Uh, this was back in the 1960s, and uh, I didn't know what it was. In those days, of course, there were no field guides, and the only pictures I could ever find when I got home showed an adult who didn't show the immature, and it took over 20 years to ID this thing, but it finally got uh, ID'd, and as a result, was added to the list of the birds of Chile, and is now illustrated as a result in Alvaro Jamarillo's uh, Guide to the Birds of Chile. Uh, another motivation for photographing is uh, band numbers. This particular one is pretty obvious, but sometimes they don't have a color band. Uh, this bird was uh, photographed at the railroad station in Croton, and I got a picture, and I found out that this bird had been hatched in Appledore Island in Maine. And it's one of the few birds there that they actually knew the exact day it hatched. So this bird, when photographed, was one year, six months, and 13 days old, uh, which is kind of interesting because uh, there's a lot of variation in these gull plumages. And a lot of the times, even the experts can't agree whether it's a second or a third or what's going on. And here we have an example of a plumage with a known age right to the day. Uh, another motivation is for conservation. There's a whole organization of uh, nature photographers who do uh, wildlife uh, to try and conserve wildlife. And it's well known, of course, what uh, photo photography role has been in creating national parks and so on and calling attention to beautiful places that might have been destroyed. Uh, this is one of the signs that, uh, I don't know if it's still there, was outside of the butterfly, the live butterfly exhibit at the uh, Bronx Zoo. And here it's uh, protecting endangered wildlife, it gives a whole thing about butterflies. And this is one of my photos on the sign, this monarch butterfly. And here at Croton, again, uh, this is a sign that was placed at Croton about the landfill, educate the people about the importance of the landfill. Uh, and it's uh, the restoration work that's being done there. And here's my photo of a bobolink. Now, uh, there's sometimes a lot of controversy uh, trying to protect birds. Uh, this is a photo I took of the rear of a uh, SUV. Uh, there was a big controversy going on uh, within the National Park Service at Gateway, uh, trying to protect the birds that nest on the beach, particularly the piping plovers, and against uh, keeping these four-wheel drive fishermen 
off the beach. So here's this guy with his I fish, I vote, join the Recreational Fishing, Fishing Alliance, and here's his bumper sticker, piping plover tastes like chicken, with a nice picture of a piping plover and a bucket of chicken. So I thought that was interesting. By the way, the fishermen in this case lost. Uh, then again, it, photos draw attention to all the things that humans do to destroy birds and the environment. Uh, this was at Nickerson, some oyster catchers uh, investigating this bottle of greater, Gatorade. This picture was taken in Oregon. Uh, there's a Western gull who I watched pick up and swallow this uh, cupcake baking cup uh, that was made out of parchment. And uh, I it completely swallowed it. I don't know what effect this had on the bird at all, if it af affected the health or whether it was able to cough it up. But it draws attention to all the things that we're doing, the garbage and stuff that we're throwing. And hopefully we can educate people by showing images like this. Uh, this is a picture that I took uh, at Point Lookout of a great black back gull that's got a fish hook uh, through its uh, bill and into the eye. You can see some of the blood. Again, uh, a lot of pictures like this have been instrumental in changing the laws, such as the one that uh, uh, dealing with lead shot uh, in uh, hunters. Uh, I was coming back from State Line Lookout uh, in uh, which is in New York. And I live in, um, anyway, I was coming back uh, from State Line Lookout and I live in Manhattan. So I passed through New Jersey, come over the George Washington Bridge. And I stopped at uh, Greenberg Sanctuary on the Palisades. And this, and I found this bird. One of the things of course in nature photography is uh, it pays to be aware of things, to know a lot about biology and the subjects. And I immediately recognized this house finch as being a ganandomorph which is, ha it's a bilateral ganandomorph, which is uh, half male and half female. And you can see on the right side, it's male, and on the left side, it's female. This particular image was published in an article on ganandomorphs in Natural History Magazine. Uh, here we have uh, a lesser blackback gull that was also uh, out at Point Lookout. And, uh, I don't know what deformed this bill, but I don't know how this bird survived. But you can see this uh, gross uh, malformation. And uh, I don't know whether it was caused by some environmental hazard like chemicals or what, but a, a lot of times uh, when deformities like this have been discovered, they've been traced back to different chemicals and laws have been passed regulating them. Uh, another reason to photograph birds that I enjoy particularly is behavior. You want to document different parts of behavior. And uh, here's a blue jay in Central Park sunbathing. So it makes you want to go and find out, well, what is sunbathing in birds and what function does it uh, uh, serve? And there are different theories, one of which is thermoregulation, another which it apparently uh, may affect the, the parasite load by the sun uh, melting the oils on the skin and trapping the parasites. It's another theory. Uh, and this is a sunbathing magnolia warbler. And as far as I can determine, this is the only known record of a magnolia warbler sunbathing, either ever seen or photographed. This is also in Central Park. There were a whole bunch of other people around photographing Cape May warblers, and I noticed this bird, and nobody seemed to be paying attention except to the Cape May, which was uh, very more colorful. Uh, now, another thing about photographing, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, photographing birds and uh, what you should look for and some of the aspects of uh, comps, maybe photographing composition. I'm not going to get into the technical aspects of f-stops and speeds and ISO and stuff like that. Uh, this was a nighthawk that Steve Walter found at Joan Beach one afternoon. I was out there with Ardith, uh, a long-term uh, photography companion of mine. 
And uh, we went over and this is a terrible picture. I mean, the lighting is harsh, it's bad, it's got a branches in the way. So what do you do? Uh, you wait. And one of the things you should get out of this presentation and nothing else is nature photography is, requires patience and persistence. And we knew this bird wasn't going anywhere, maybe move a little bit on the branch until it dusk or nightfall. So we hung around for a few hours and it was, was a pretty slow day. So we hung around and socialized and we came back a few hours later and this is what we got. Uh, see, beautiful, no branches in the way, no shadows, gorgeous lighting, beautiful photograph. And here we are again talking about uh, bird behavior and knowing bird behavior and having patience. Uh, this buff-breasted sandpiper you can see here was out at Heckscher State Park. Uh, we went out there looking for it. Uh, this picture, by the way, was taken by Allison Murray, and I'm using it with her permission. Uh, so we noticed that this bird was working its way, feeding in the grass strips in the uh, expansion cracks of the concrete of this parking lot. So what do we do? We just sat and we waited and we waited, and this is what I got as a result of that. This nice buff-breasted, beautiful sandpiper. You can see the grass in the expansion crack. Uh, and it does, and I wanna also talk about patience and persistence some more. Uh, when I was growing up birding in Central Park, uh, in fact, in the Northeast, cormorants were quite rare, and now they've really exploded. And in the last few seasons, they've been coming into Central Park, um, uh, into the uh, Belvedere, the uh, Turtle Pond uh, by the Belvedere. And they're quite tame. And so I just sit and wait and spend hours there. And I caught, finally caught this cormorant with this yellow perch that it had just caught. And I love this picture of the lighting. And you can see the bill is right up in the gill of this fish. And the occurrence, uh, sometimes or uh, often at that time of year, they perch by that dock at Turtle Pond. And this is a typical photograph of one of those cormorants. And uh, I see a lot of time birders, photographers come by and they snap a few pictures. And I spent the whole day there and you wait and with patience and this is what you get. You get this beautiful, cobalt blue of the breeding plumage interior of the mouth of this double crested cormorant. And I was uh, out with Ardith recently. We were out at uh, Nickerson Beach and uh, we, uh, we sometimes we stick together and which means our photographs are pretty much the same. And we separate and sometimes she finds some stuff uh, that I don't. And sometimes I get stuff that she doesn't. And this day she was standing there doing something. And I noticed this cormorant that was fishing right off the beach in close and it would move in and move out. And it kept working it back within a half a mile or so of the beach. And it was fishing and it was catching these pipefish. And these uh, pipefish, well, all fish, the um, birds, they have to go in the right way. It's like a fishing hook. You have to have it so that the uh, fins are compressed. And this bird kept catching the fish and trying to get them uh, so that they go in the right way so it can swallow it. And of course the fish isn't cooperating. It's twisting around. And after walking up and down the beach and getting some really terrible pictures and terrible light, I managed to get this picture, which I like. The cormorant here, it flipped this pipefish up into the air and was waiting it to come down, hoping to swallow it. Uh, at the end here, patience, persistence. Uh, this is, uh, there was a group of cedar waxwing uh, feeding on these uh, crab apples in Central Park. And the waxwings, if you're careful, they're pretty tame. And, but this is a terrible picture. I mean, it's all just um, full of branches and stuff in the way and everything. Not my style at all. 
So again, patience and persistence, and you hang around and you reposition yourself and you wait until the light changes and this is what you get. This beautiful wax wing about to grab this crab apple. And you get shots like this. Uh, this program doesn't do well with verticals, so let me see what I can do here. And here's another shot of the wax wing and beautiful evening light uh, that tossed uh, up a crab apple and was about to swallow it. Okay. Uh, then I was out at the beach one day and uh, Nickerson is a favorite place for people to photograph oyster catchers. And there was a woman photographing birds sitting uh, on a uh, beach chair, seated in there all day. This particular oyster catcher was with this chick and the chick was running all around. And she had been there for several hours, lost patience, got up and left. And I stayed around and lo and behold, this little chick went and got tucked under the mother's wing. That was a... uh, okay. Uh, I also wanna talk about composition. Uh, this is a photo that I took at the Schwangunks. Uh, most people put photos right in the middle, the bird in the middle. And uh, I'm also guilty of that. One of the reasons is that the type of equipment I have doesn't allow for readily repositioning. But here, this uh, was a picture that I was able to crop. And look at the difference that makes with the bird off center to the left. Uh, here's a red tail that was taken at Croton Point. I love the back, the plumage in the back, uh, not the plumage, but the full foliage, the colors. And this bird is pretty much in the center frame. And I was pretty close. So I couldn't do much, but I did crop it a little and I got this picture. And I guess uh, depends what you prefer. Some people like one, some the other, some both. But uh, I think you see the difference. I'm gonna, most of the pictures I've shown here and I tried to keep it pretty local, but I wanna, I used a couple from other areas to illustrate some points. This is a rock uh, hydrox uh, taken on Table Mountain in South Africa, uh, where they bur these animals are very tame and people feed them. And it's a nice portrait, but look at this picture. Uh, here's the high, Rock Hydrax, looking over Cape Town. This is part of Cape Town. And here's this ridge that goes all the way out to South Point to the end of uh, Africa there where the two oceans, the Atlantic and Indian Ocean meet. Uh, here's a picture I took at Rockefeller. Uh, this is a uh, song sparrow. Uh, it was going to the nest feeding young. Uh, and it's got a mouthful of uh, dragonfly nymphs and dragonfly larva and escuvia, escuvia, escuvia. And uh, I don't know how many there are. See if you can count them. But it shows again behavior and what the bird was feeding on. It was feeding, it was actually going, it had to be going into the water to be getting these uh, insects. Uh, this, grackles are very hard. They're beautiful birds. They're hard to photograph because the colors, the iridescent colors are so gross. Uh, they're so contrasty. I wouldn't say gross. They're so contrasty in light. And I was able to get this shot in uh, Central Park in the shade. And I love this picture. But here again, I'm concentrating on behavior. Uh, here's a grackle that's taking some oil from its uropigial gland to lubricate its feathers. And I was watching, spent a lot of time watching grackles. And I know uh, they feed a lot on acorns and I discovered that that's one of their main food sources as it is for many birds, uh, ducks and things. And what I noticed, I did some reading and what I discovered was, this is well known, but in the literature, but not by most birders, it has a special structure inside the bill for cracking open acorns. And you can see it here, right there. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Uh, and then again, I was out at the beach with artists and I was just a 
month or so ago, and I was looking at young skimmers. And I noticed this skimmer uh, barely able to fly. It picked up a feather and was playing, put it down, was picked it up again. Then it picked up a piece of this beech driftwood and was playing with it, dropped it. And then it picked up this empty mussel shell and was playing with it. And then it picked up this, uh, I guess, uh, remains of seaweed and vegetation and was playing around with it. And, you know, you hear about play and the importance it has in animals in uh, development and teaching and learning motor skills and uh, how to catch prey. But I never heard of it as being in young skimmers that just about to fledge. And I thought that was pretty amazing. And it's amazing when you stop and you watch and you spend a lot of time looking. And that's what I enjoy about photography. I learn a lot of new things. Uh, here's an old picture I took years ago of a northern water thrush in Central Park. And it's uh, not a bad picture. It's not a great picture. But here's the same bird with its mouth underwater. And I submitted this picture to Handbook of Birds of the World. And uh, the first picture may have been good for field guides, but they were interested in course and behavior. And I submitted these two pictures and they notified me that they had picked one of my pictures and they didn't say which, which one, but I knew right away it was this one because of the behavior. And here's it published in the book. And here you have on the right side, this whole spiel about water thrushes and how they feed and the type of food they eat and so on. So I thought it was pretty amazing uh, what you can learn just from one picture. I ran against this uh, gray seal out at Nickerson one spring and I got this picture and uh, I noticed this thing here on the skull, on the head, it looks like it's half shaven. And I said, well, what's going on here? And has it, has it been hit by a propeller of a boat the way most of these things are? And I looked it up and I found out that that's the way these seals molt. They molt in patches like that. And the molt usually starts on the head. And when they do molt, it's usually at that time of year and they come ashore to do it. So that was another interesting thing that I learned from photographing. Okay, now uh, this is a picture that was taken many years ago at the East uh, Pond um, at Jamaica Bay. Uh, Artie Morris here lying in the mud photographing shorebirds. And you can see the shorebirds right here. And the reason he's doing that, of course, is to get close and to get a bird's eye view. And uh, this picture was uh, lent to me for use by Artie. It was taken by a dear friend of ours, a mutual friend, Max Larson, who has since deceased. But anyway, I told Artie, I said, Artie and everybody, I'm sorry, I don't do mud. And I put this picture in, I didn't really know where to put it, but it, it sort of ties in with the previous picture because he's trying to get an eyes, a bird's eye view. And you can see here, the impor important thing when you're photographing wildlife and birds is to get the eye in focus. And the new modern cameras know that, and they've built art artificial intelligence into that. So it focuses on the eye. And this picture was just taken a couple of weeks ago in the parking lot at uh, Point Lookout of a tree swallow and it's lifting off. And you can see most of it's out of focus, but the eye is in, so it looks pretty good. But if that eye wasn't in focus, forget it. That would be something to put in the trash bin. Uh, but I do manage to get some good photos uh, at eye level. Uh, this particular American golden plover was taken in Nickerson. And I love this photo too, because of the beautiful background. And I think this vegetation adds a lot to the photo. Also beautiful light, nice glint in the eye. A lot of photographers say, well, you have to get the glint in the eye. And you can't always do that, uh, particularly during the middle of the day. And, uh, and I know some people, some photographers uh, on one of the forums say, well, he thinks it's overrated. Some people will put that in in Photoshop, but I don't uh, do that. And uh, 
this is another I will shot. This was taken from the uh, window of my car. This is one of the puddles at Hexer State Park. And when I look back, it's amazing how many pictures I take from the window of my car, uh, which serves as a really nice blind. This is a young Hudsonian godwit. Uh, this is a marble godwit at uh, Dickerson. Uh, uh, the other thing is I don't have a zoom. So I get in to get a nice portrait. And then what happens, the bird spreads its wings and the wings are out of the frame. But in this case, I was lucky and I got the wings in the frame. And here's some more bird's eye view taken in Nickerson. This is a, uh, a fall plumage uh, dunling. A summer red knot. And here's another knot taken from my car window in a parking lot at Point Lookout of a young knot in the fall, red knot. And here's a uh, leaf sandpiper. A uh, lot of photographers, uh, they want what they call sweet light, which is early morning, late evening. And they go out for photographing just before dawn, an hour or two after sun sun up and then they go out they go home go to sleep come back in the evening but you can get some beautiful shots during the day as well uh this was actually taken in the evening this leaf sandpiper this is a point lookout and uh this is a uh, white rumped at nickerson in the fall there's some at the ocean side uh, nature Center, a Marine Nation Center in Oceanside, some Eastern Willets that nest there. Love the green background. Uh, you may have noticed that that's my style of photographing, if uh, there's such a thing as have, not having a style. I like to take nice clean portraits, clean backgrounds without any color. Now, this thing about eye level too uh, can be overrated. But anyway, here's a picture of a turkey vulture. This is the normal thing you get, but how about this uh, eye level view looking right down at you? Uh, you would, might think that this was taken at some Hawk Ridge somewhere, but actually it was taken at the Peekskill Railroad Station. Uh, this is a very old picture that was taken when I was living in Cambridge, Mass. Um, this was a bird in New Hampshire, this northern hawk owl. Uh, this was back in the uh, 70s. And uh, here's another beautiful eye view looking right at you. This bird came down uh, to feed on some, uh, it was, there was a lot of snow on the ground, but there was a chipmunk that was bouncing around on the snow to my amazement. This bird came right down for the chipmunk. And it missed, but it, it had these beautiful prints of the chipmunk in the snow and the outline of the primary feathers in the snow. And I went to take a picture and if, wouldn't it happen that some birder, other birder that was there stepped right in the snow and ruined the picture. And I should have taken the shot. Nowadays, I pretty, pretty much could have maybe salvaged it in Photoshop. Anyway, here's some other nice uh, bird's eye view. Um, I was trying to photograph short-eared owls. I was my girlfriend, Ginnell. Uh, we were in the black dirt region of Orange County. And there were people from all over photographing in this one field. And, and it's all private property and you can't go into the field. And the birds are flying around at quite a distance. And I was sat there for several, four or five hours and not having any success. And I said to Ginnell, I said, well, why don't we just leave? And it's a long road out, way out. And I was driving out and I was near the entrance of the road, the exit. And I saw this shorted owl was flying along the side of the car and it sat down right by the, near the car. And I inched up, took some pictures, inch closer, took some pictures, inch closer. And I finally got right opposite it. And the bird just sat there staring with me and looking all around. So. And this is one case where I did lose patience and it, it worked out, fortunately. Uh, I, 
here's a try to be a little more artistic is a surety at all. Uh, this actually was a picture that was taken earlier in the evening and I just took down the exposure in Photoshop. Uh, I was out with Ardith a couple of times uh, during some big incursions of great gray owls uh, in Canada and the northern US. Uh, we went up to Canada a couple of times uh, at four year interval. And the first time also we missed all the birds by a day or two. Uh, the second time we went up to an island in Montreal where there were supposed to be six birds. And wouldn't you know it, the uh, birds left the day before and there was a big ice storm. And so we only spent about four hours in Canada and we heard about this great gray owl that was in the Adirondacks in Keene. So we beat it back to the States and we came across the border. And of course the border people were pretty suspicious. You know, we only spent about four hours in Canada. You know, what did you pick up and what are you bringing back? And I think when we told them we were photographing great gray owls, uh, I think they took that as uh, being something that we weren't drug smugglers or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so this is a pretty ordinary view, I think, of a great gray. But I like this one a lot. Uh, I think it shows a lot about the, uh, the atmosphere. It's a whole different atmosphere. And this bird flew off and perched on this fence post. And I really like this shot. And here again, there's a nice white sky, beautiful background to this bird. Here's another shot of the bird. Unfortunately, it's looking the other way, but I still like it a lot. I like the colors. I like the muted grays and these beautiful uh, sort of brownish, reddish of the vegetation. Sometimes you don't want a bird's eye view. This was an American coot at the, the reservoir in Central Park. One of the things about the reservoir is you're high, you're looking down. And it's difficult to get really nice bird's eye pictures unless the birds are at some distance and you're using a telephoto lens. But here I'm looking down at this American coot and I think it's a beautiful shot on the ice and you can see the lobed feet. And I was talking about beautiful light, uh, evening light. This was American Woodcock in Central Park, and this was late in the evening uh, during a big incursion a few years ago. They were, a number of them were forced down by a storm. And I waited around and got this shot. It was late in the evening. There were a whole bunch of photographers hanging around, including some people I know. And they were, a lot of them had left. And uh, one of them, he said, I said, you gotta really hang in here. You gotta hang in, got some more patience. And sure enough, this bird flew in in this beautiful evening light. Again, patience, persistence. There's another shot taken in the evening light. Beautiful shot of a semi-palmated sandpiper at a point lookout. Another evening shot, beautiful evening light uh, at the Lido Beach. Uh, at, actually, I think point lookout. Uh, and it's killed you. But then again, here's a shot taken uh, at Point Lookout. And look at this, uh, beautiful daylight, no evening light, beautiful gray background, which actually is parking lot again. And it's amazing how many pictures you take of birds in parking lots in this vegetation. And I think it's a beautiful portrait. Uh, here's a semi-palmated sandpiper, again, in evening light. I'm looking down on it, some people may frown on that, but I still like it. Uh, but here again, here's an, uh, another uh, semi-palmated plover, a young bird, uh, again, taken also at uh, Point Lookout. And without that beautiful evening light and with a nice gray background, and I think it's a gorgeous portrait, nice sharp picture. And here we have evening light, a uh, young semi-palmated plover, also at Point Lookout on the sand. It's a semi-palmated evening shot also. Another semi-palmated sandpiper up uh, feeding in the rack above the uh, high tide line. 
nice evening light also, nice glint in the eye. And I think you can actually see maybe the semi palms on the feet. Okay, now here's a snowy owl. Uh, here, these birds uh, just sit around and don't do much. And uh, usually the eyes are closed and you're trying to get them to pose and open their eyes. And a lot of you who stand next to me, me off in mother, you know, open your eyes, open your eyes to the bird, look this way, look to me, come on. And of course they seldom do it. But uh, this was a beautiful uh, at Jones Beach, this gorgeous snowy owl with the eyes open. And it didn't do, it did a few things, uh, just fluffed its feathers and yawned. And I don't have, have those pictures uh, here. But uh, this is my favorite snowy owl shot. Uh, here, this was side lighting. And the bird is sort of in the habitat on the dune, surveying its domain. I love this shot. Uh, here's backlighting. This is the only flight shot I have. Try not to disturb the birds. Try to get them to fly. And that's why I kept it. But uh, it's okay. I think it's a nice shot. It's the only shot I have flight shots, so I keep it. Uh, then uh, I turned around. A snowy owl came flying right by me. I turned around, and I was heading right into the sun. And this bird, I got just a shot of this bird. Uh, it's in the center of the frame. Couldn't do anything about it. But I turned it into black and white, did some manipulation. And here's this beautiful shot, I think, of a snowy owl that looks like a windswept tundra. Now, um, I'm pretty much into gulls, and most people know. I showed a lot of gulls in the uh, rare birds thing, so I'm not going to show those here. Uh, and in fact, one of the chats a couple of months ago, I mentioned that I may not show any slides this time, but a lot of people objected. For some reason, a lot of people don't like gulls. I guess they're uh, hard to ID, which they are in certain plumages. But I love this shot. This is a bird coming into breeding plumage, a nice adult. Herring gull. And this was taken right at the railroad station in Peekskill. This is another flight shot. This is a, a first year herring gull. Uh, the best place to get flight shots of herring uh, gulls, uh, herring and other gulls, of course, is on pelagic trips. Unfortunately, uh, Paul Griss isn't doing them anymore because of uh, health problems. But the wonderful opportunities if you can get offshore. Uh, here's a, anyway, this shot was taken at Jones Beach Inlet of this Bonaparte's go a few years back. Beautiful lighting. Uh, this is the water in the inlet. This is the far shore. Uh, this uh, Bonaparte's go uh, was taken at the railroad station at Croton. And uh, it's in spring. It's a young bird. You can see the brown feathers here. But I love the background for the water and this, the, this gold from the vegetation. This is another from a pelagic trip. Uh, this is a third winter glaucus gull. This was one of the photos that was published in a photographic guide to gulls of the world. Uh, one of my colleagues criticized this because the, the bill wasn't fully shown. But it did get published and I got paid for it. So this is another uh, shot. Uh, this is an Iceland gull taken from a plagic trip. Uh, this is a second winter bird. Nice, beautiful light showing the beautiful, the whole head, the eye, the wings, tail. Kind of shots uh, hard to get unless you're on a boat. This is another. Uh, Iceland. This is a much further advanced in age. Another nice shot. And of course, uh, terns, uh, gulls and terns, uh, terns also being my favorite subject. Uh, I'm not showing too many here, uh, but this is a common tern at Nickerson. A beautiful blue sky. There's another common tern in Nickerson, a young bird trying to swallow a fish. That's a courtship. Uh, that's it.
I guess uh, you want to hang up then, Anne, or? No, no, sorry, just the bird clock. Uh, we're fine. Call it, uh, call it 15 more minutes, and then we'll wrap for questions. How's that? Okay, great. Um, okay, this is a pair of, if I had known, I would have put in more pictures. Uh, anyway, this is a pair of uh, common terns. Uh, this is a, a attempting copulation, and he's feeding her a fish. Again, this this is not early morning. This is really in uh, daylight, in uh, mid midday. But still, I think it's a beautiful picture, and against the white sand, it's really nice. I like it a lot. Uh, as I say, I don't have a zoom lens, and sometimes it's tough when you get everything in the frame. Uh, but still, I like this shot anyway, uh, as a common turn squabbling. Um, and uh, I say flight shots, for me anyway, are very difficult to get, except for when you're on a boat. Uh, however, uh, this is a Forster's turn that was coming in for landing. Uh, this also was taken at Point Lookout, uh, back at the West uh, Marina, which is a good place to photograph. And the birds come in at high tide and perch on the uh, wharf there. This is an adult Forster's turn uh, uh, in uh, fall plumage. Uh, this was taken at uh, Point Lookout. It used to be a great place uh, at the inlet there, Jones Inlet. Years ago, you used to get large numbers of Bonaparte's gulls. Uh, apparently, they somehow they shifted their feeding pattern. Uh, something happened. We used to get large numbers up the Hudson River. It's a great place to photograph. Unfortunately, I wasn't photographing much then. Uh, anyway, this is another one at the West Marina recently, just about a month ago, at uh, Point Lookout. Uh, the forces turn coming in for landing. I like this shot too. It's disturbed the black belly plover. You can see the white uh, ax axillaries. Uh, and here's the forces turns complaining, and here they're barking at each other. And uh, this is, I like this shot too. Uh, now, I was coming back from uh, Montauk Point one years ago with my friend Fritz Mueller. Uh, we went out to get the barnacle goose and the pink-footed goose that was out there. And we were coming back along Dune Road, which is a good place for bitterns in the winter. And we were, uh, we were driving by and I noticed this bittern beside the car in the uh, marsh. There's a ditch there. And uh, I took out my camera and started shooting again from the car window. Unfortunately, Fritz was on the driver's side and didn't get any shots, but that's the brakes. And I really like this shot too. I like the, also this evening light, the side lighting, and the bird here, just the pose. Uh, this was taken at, um, uh, up at, um, where the eagles are at the Hudson there. Um, uh, what's this? Anyway, I'll, I'll come back. Uh, I was photographing eagles uh, they're coming down the river on these ice flows. And um, this great blue heron suddenly came, perched on an ice flow, and the fish was submerged, didn't even see it. It picked up this huge striped bass, didn't know what to do with it, dropped it, and flew off. And I just managed to get up a couple of frames and luckily the light was sufficient enough to get a shot. You can see this side lighting. Uh, I like this shot a lot too. It's a great egret. But this was also at the Marine Nation Center at Oceanside. And what I like about it is the background, that beautiful background of the uh, grass, uh, the Spartina patents, I think it is. Uh, here's again from a, a boat. Pelagic trip, great place to photograph uh, birds. There's a gannet going in for a dive. Another gannet coming by the boat. And sometimes if you're lucky, you get a fulmar. Uh, it's not exactly where we're liking in the frame, but here again, uh, it's problems with the focusing on the camera and also with the boat moving. And I guess mainly with the photographer's competence. But 
It's another nice bird that you don't see too often in our area. Uh, this is a photo taken on another pelagic, a uh, white-faced uh, storm petrel. I like the, it's not facing us, but I like, you can actually see the side of the head and I like the reflection in the water. So Wilson's storm petrel. Very difficult to photograph also because these birds are coming into the chum and the chum is flowing away from the boat. And so the birds are always facing away from you. To get some one that's facing is, uh, takes uh, quite a bit of patience. Uh, here's a common eider. This is also at uh, Point Lookout. Beautiful female common eider. I believe it's an adult female. Uh, this is a young king eider. Uh, this was up on the North Shore a few years ago, and the bird was uh, way out in the sound, quite far. And here again, uh, people were, came and ticked off the bird, photographed, left, it was way out, much too far. And I hung around for several hours. Uh, the tide went out and the bird, lo and behold, came right in to feed along the shore. Again, patience, persistence. This was a nice male harlequin down at Barnicket many years ago. Beautiful duck. Hooded merganser on Central Park Reservoir. Nice light. Uh, there's a female merganser. Uh, catching a crayfish. Uh, now, what I discovered from watching these birds was that crayfish are really abundant in the reservoir in Central Park. And this is a main food source for the mergansers. And uh, also other birds, coot, feed on the uh, crayfish. Uh, here we have some shovelers. Uh, here's a pair, this uh, mating. Courtship behavior, this bird is its head up in a courtship stance. Uh, tried to get a little creative. This is at the reservoir too. Close up of shoveler, just the eye and the head tucked in and some of the feathers. The shoveler coming in for landing. Very difficult to get these shots too. The birds take off and they're so fast and they usually at a distance and you, and uh, anyway, after many, many hours and years, I managed to get a few. Some people are much better at this than I am. But anyway, this is a beautiful male shoveler coming in. You can see the nice wing pattern with the beautiful green speculum. Nice picture of a male ring neck. Uh, this particular picture was taken in Prospect Park. I don't get there too often, but I should go more often. Uh, you don't have the high level that you have at the reservoir in Central Park. You're right at level with the birds. And the birds, uh, people feed them and they come quite tame. And so I got this, uh, I think a gorgeous picture of a male ring neck. Uh, here's a picture of a couple of male wood ducks, a nice portrait I like standing on the ice in the reservoir in Central Park. I have a lot of wood duck pictures doing all sorts of different behaviors, fighting and so on. But we only have a limited amount of time. And I, I show here mainly, I've been showing mainly the shorebirds, gulls, terns, and the ducks. And uh, uh, one of these days, maybe uh, if I'm invited back, we can do some of the uh, passerines. Uh, here's evening light on the reservoir, being a little lovey-dovey here. This female preening the male. And here's a uh, red-breasted mergs. I think that's a young male. Um, this was at Gravesend Bay a couple of years ago when uh, we went down, there were a lot of unusual birds down there. We went and spent a day photographing. And uh, 
in addition to the Harlequin duck and the black-headed gull and the other stuff that was around, I got this, uh, what I like this picture of these uh, red-breasted mergs. Uh, I have a number of shots of this, and maybe I'll show some time, taken under different lighting conditions with different backgrounds. Uh, it's a nice, beautiful pie bill grebe. Beautiful evening light on the reservoir in Central Park, a nice reflection. Okay, as I say, this program has some difficulty with verticals. Uh, this uh, Del Cooper's uh, hawk was taken in Central Park. Uh, the bird was perched at eye level, and to my amazement, it stayed while I went around in uh, almost knee deep snow crunching away and the light reflected from the snow and it is burned out meaning there's little detail on the right but i think the lighting nevertheless is uh, beautiful and this is a gorgeous picture i think of the coopers nice beautiful coopers okay now let me get back to where i was okay uh, this is a burr plank. This is a nice adult bald eagle. And this is the uh, January pinup for the uh, Sawmill River Audubon calendar. Uh, this was the same day uh, the great blue heron with the sea bass. Um, you know, I don't live in the air in uh, Westchester, but I do have my girlfriend here and I go up. And, uh, and you just got to hit it right. If it's too, you gotta have ice on the river, but if they're too much frozen, the birds are far out and you gotta have the open enough river so the birds are floating down the river on ice flows and you gotta have the tide right and the time of day. And sometimes you just hit it right after many years. And this is uh, one of the pictures I got that day, sitting on an ice flow with a nice reflection here. This was the same day at Fur Plank. This uh, shot of a bald eagle flying in, nice adult bald eagle. And I was out at uh, Jones Beach one day and I got this picture again from my car window of a uh, Merlin. Again, a shot I like. Nice clean shot, plain background, beautiful perch. And uh, I was with Ardith one day, we were out at the parking lot at Jones Beach. And this was actually a few minutes after sunset. And I was amazed that this even came out. I purchased the, uh, put the uh, camera and the lens on the hood of the car, steadied it and got this shot, which I really like again. Nice, beautiful background, nice pose with a beautiful perch. Another nice Merlin. And here we have a downy woodpecker in Central Park, which is, I think, a beautiful bird. Uh, I think people a lot of time concentrate too much on rare birds and they don't spend enough time looking at the common stuff. And this is a beautiful male downy woodpecker in nice light. It's a picture I took uh, at the La Pot Bridge in uh, Central Park. I like this picture because of the uh, woodpecker here feeding, uh, drinking. Beautiful, different than most red bellied uh, woodpeckers. Uh, I took this in the park. It's not a very good picture. Um, it's too much. I have to, one of these days, learn how to use Photoshop, take out this green uh, hinge. And the lighting wasn't very good, but it's the best I could do under the circumstances. But what I like, I wanted to show this shot because of the shell fungi that's right over the hole. Nice, uh, smart bird there, keeping the rain and out. And I, uh, I understand that woodpeckers do that quite a bit. So I thought I'd throw that in, even though it's not a really good picture. Um, let me go back. Here's a nice red-headed woodpecker in Central Park, bird that came into the feeders. It's a nice, uh, Beautiful sapsucker, 
one evening, evening light. Again, my signature, if you can call that. Nice portrait, plain, beautiful background. Nice, uh, sharp picture. Uh, twigs in the way. Uh, it's a recent photo again at Central Park of a blue-headed vireo. Nice eye-level shot. Uh, perch for just a few seconds and sometimes you got to be quick and you got to be lucky that you have the camera set for the right exposure. So I always uh, try and set things up uh, for the right exposure in a particular spot, just in case something flies in. Doesn't always succeed, but sometimes it does. Uh, this is another, this is also one of my favorite photographs. Uh, this was one of a pair of uh, warbling vireos that nested in Central Park near the maintenance meadow. And uh, I took this picture and uh, again, I was surprised that I actually got anything. Uh, but I love this shot of, of the Orban Gurria. I like the pose and the lighting and the background and the, the branches. The black throated blue, again in Central Park. It's another black throated blue. It's an earlier picture. I like this pose. Uh, but a nice black throated green. So again in Central Park, nice clean shot. I was sitting at the bench at Tanner Spring when this thing just popped up right in front of me, really close. A black burning warbler. And here's the uh, shot used to uh, advertise this program. Nice bay breasted, nice eye level shot too. Uh, but I like this shot much better actually. It shows the bird in action. It's leaning to glean something off the leaf. And I don't like the pose at all. Another nice clean shot, nothing in the way. Beautiful green background, nice leaves. Uh, a black and white. Another shot of a black and white, different angle. Look at all that beautiful uh, feathering. It's nice black marks on the under tail feathers, under tail coverts. The black pole, nice male black pole. This was in an oak tree in the park uh, last spring. And this is another one of my favorite shots in the same tree. This was the previous day. Uh, it's a female black pole. But I just love this pose and I love the uh, tassels and the leaves and it's the way the bird is leaning up to grab something and how this uh, branch frames it. And again, nothing in the way, no branches obstructing the view or anything. It's the Cape May by the bush that was called the magic bush. Uh, uh, I think it's called Croton uh, Ester, I, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. If not, someone will correct me. Uh, there were a lot of Cape Mays hanging out. This is one of the Beautiful Cape Mays. I also have some nice female pictures, which I don't think I have included here. Uh, here's another, this is a chestnut sided that again, I was on the bench at Tanner Spring and it popped up right in front of me. And I just got, I think one or two frames before it took off. And this is a hooded warbler that was taken in central, uh, I think it was last spring. Uh, it was down by the um, dock at uh, Turtle Pond and there were photographers there all day coming and photographing it. And the bird was sitting actually on the dock and people were photographing it. And But I waited around and around until late, very late evening and the bird backed off from the dock and landed in this, uh, on this, uh, twig. And I think it was a beautiful shot, beautiful lighting, nice pose. And I love the framing here of this vegetation. And as I say, everyone else had already left. Patience, persistence. Uh, so Kentucky, this was taken at 
Washington Square Park. It's a nice picture, I think, of the Kentucky. Uh, the only really good one I have. I have some others, but but the background is awful. You know, I mean, this is a picture I would never show normally. Uh, but it's a good picture for a field guy. You know, somebody could take this picture and cut out the background. So, a uh, Canada warbler again in Central Park. I like the pose here. The nice water, northern, uh, uh, northern water thrush. Uh, this was taken also in the park by La Pot Bridge. I like this picture also. I like the uh, vegetation and the framing and the way it's sitting. And again, none, nothing obstructing the bird. It's a picture that was taken in very poor light. Uh, and uh, it wasn't using a flash, though it looks like it, but uh, this is a uh, female magnolia. This is another shot of a magnolia. Uh, not a traditional view, but one I like very much. Uh, I like the pose, the way the bird is straining and looking back, and how it sort of uh, complements the way the angle of the leaves are here. Uh, here we have a uh, beautiful uh, Baltimore Oriole. Uh, this was also in Central Park on a silver bell leave in spring. This was in the old days when I didn't have my big, big, a bigger lens as I have now, but it worked out quite well. This was late in the afternoon uh, when I found out about it. I ran over there. Uh, this was taken up at the reservoir more recently on the silver bells last year. Uh, they seem to attract a lot of Orioles and this year it didn't seem to attract any. But anyway, this, I like this pose too. This is a female Baltimore Oriole, again on a blooming silver bell in spring. Uh, here we have a uh, rusty blackbird, another nice portrait uh, against the snow. The snow. The snow provides beautiful backgrounds. We want to thank you for joining us tonight on Zoom for this program. Visit our website to see other upcoming events at sawmillriverautobahn.org. And we wish you, as always, good health and good birding.